Chapter 33 I watched other killings. I never saw a single victim cry. These dead bodies had long forgotten the taste of tears, except once. One day, as we returned from work, we saw three wooden structures in the center of the camp. Attendants. The Nazis surrounding us, machine guns pointed at us, the usual ritual. Three prisoners in chains, and among them a very young little boy, a sad-eyed little angel. The Nazis seemed more preoccupied, more worried than usual. To kill a child in front of thousands of people was not a small job. The head of the camp read the decision. All eyes were on the child. He was biting his lips as he stood in the shadows of the rope. The three prisoners together stepped onto the chairs. Together the ropes were placed around their necks. Long live liberty, shouted the two men. But the boy was silent. Where is God? Where is he? Someone behind me was asking. At the signal, the three chairs were pushed over. Total silence in the camp. On the horizon, the sun was setting. Hats off, screamed one Nazi. His voice was shaking. As for the rest of us, we were weeping. Cover your heads. Then came the march past the victims. The two men were no longer alive. Their tongues were hanging out, big and blue. But the third rope was still moving. The child, too light, was still breathing. Long live liberty, shouted the two men. But the boy was silent. Where is God? Where is he? Someone behind me was asking. At the signal, the three chairs were pushed over. Total silence in the camp. On the horizon, the sun was setting. Hats off, screamed one Nazi. His voice was shaking. As for the rest of us, we were weeping. Cover your heads. Then came the march past the victims. The two men were no longer alive. Their tongues were hanging out, big and blue. But the third rope was still moving. The child, too light, was still breathing. And so he remained for more than a half an hour, somewhere between life and death, moving before our eyes. And we were forced to look at him closely. He was still alive when I passed him. His tongue was still red, his eyes not yet dead. Behind me I heard the same man asking, Where is God? And from within me I heard a voice answer, Where is he? This is where, hanging from this rope. That night the soup tasted of corpses. Chapter 34 The summer was coming to an end. That day was a Jewish holiday called Rosh Hashanah. The entire camp was anxious, and every one of us felt stressed. The dinner was given out, especially thick soup, but nobody touched it. We wanted to wait until after our holiday prayer. Outside, surrounded by electrified barbed wire, thousands of Jews, despair on their faces, gathered in silence. Night was falling quickly, and more and more prisoners kept coming from every block. What are you, my God? I thought with anger. This misery? Why do you, God, go on hurting these poor people's terrified minds, their sick bodies? About 10,000 Jews had come to participate in the sad religious service, including the block leaders. Powerful God, the voice of the prisoner leading the prayer was soft, and at first I thought it was the wind. Blessed be God's name. Thousands of lips repeated the prayer, bent over like trees in a storm. Blessed be God's name. Why, but why would I bless him? Every part of me rebelled, because he caused thousands of children to burn in his crematorium, because he kept six crematoria working day and night, including the holy days, because in his great power he had created Auschwitz, Birkenau, Buna, and so many other factories of death. How could I say to him, Blessed be you, master of the universe, who chose us, among all the people to be tortured day and night, to watch as our fathers, our mothers, our brothers end up in the fire. Blessed be your holy name for having chosen us to be killed in your camps. I listened as the prisoner's voice got louder. It was broke, powerful but broken. Through the weeping of the entire... I listened as the power, prisoner's voice got louder. It was powerful but broken through the weeping of the entire group. All the earth and universe are gods. He kept pausing, as if he didn't have the strength to find the meaning under the text. The song was stuck in his throat. And I, the former student of Kabbalah, the former boy who studied religion so closely, was thinking, 
Yes, man is stronger, greater than God. Look at these men whom you have lied to, allowed them to be tortured, killed, and burned. What do they do? They pray before you. They praise your name. All of creation is a witness to the greatness of God, he said. In earlier days, the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah had been very important in my life. In those days, I fully believed that every one of my actions and every one of my prayers were seen and heard by, by God. But now, I no longer prayed for anything. I was no longer able to. Contrastingly, I felt very strong. I felt powerful. I was the powerful, God the powerless. My eyes had opened, and I was alone, terribly alone in a world without God. God without man, without love or happiness. I was nothing but ashes now, but I felt myself to be stronger than this God to whom my life had been connected for so long. In the middle of these men gathered for prayer, I felt like an observer, a stranger. The religious service ended with a prayer for parents, for children, and for ourselves. We remained standing outside for a long time, unable to take ourselves away from this strange moment. Then came the time to go to sleep, and slowly the prisoners returned to their blocks. I thought I heard them wishing each other a happy holiday. I ran to look for my father. At the same time, I was afraid of having to wish him a happy holiday, in which I no longer believed. He was leaning against the wall, bent shoulders, as if under a heavy load. I went up to him, took his hand, and kissed it. I felt a tear on my head. hand. Who was it? Mine? His? I said nothing. Nor did he. Never before had we understood each other so clearly. The sound of the bell brought us back to reality. We had to go to bed. We came back from very far away. I looked up at my father's face, trying to see a smile, or something like it on his sad face. But there was nothing, not the shadow of an expression. Defeat.